o'clock to address any possible shortage. Okay, that is that is like hearing your name, your voice on the on the answering machine, which I know that's a very outdated reference, but we've all been there. What's an answering machine? If you can. <laughs> Since you're 25, I'll explain it to you after the briefing. Cambodian Prime Minister. Sure. He's been in power since 1985, which is the last time answering machines were a thing. <laughs> yeah. More recently than that, I would say, but... As we look ahead to tomorrow's inflation speech, let me ask you to look back at some of the uh, warnings that were issued uh, last year by uh, Summers and Ratner and so on. In retrospect, were they right that uh, some of the government policies were going to lead to inflation? Uh, I wouldn't say we agreed with them then, and we don't agree with them now. I would note that um, <clears throat> as it relates to actions like the American Rescue Plan, what we were providing assistance and relief in the form of checks to people who needed that assistance at the time. So we know, if we look at the recent inflation data, a large, depending on which data you look at, two-thirds to even 70 percent of inflation data is, is a result of energy prices. A, a large part of that is the result, and, and, and Chairman Powell has spoken to this, and Secretary, um, Secretary Yellen has also spoken to this, as a result of President Putin's invasion of Ukraine and the impact on the global, global energy markets. Those are all steps and impacts that I don't think anyone could have predicted a year ago. White House be able to Jen, make can public. Can you spread out the questions a little bit? Uh, can you yield to your colleagues, please? I, I would be happy to, but I think it would be polite if you let MJ finish her question. Several. Go ahead. Could the White House make public? In 2017 and 2018, the president uh, routed $13 million of income through S corporations. There are some ethics experts who are calling on him to divulge the specific sources of income in those revenue streams. Richard Painter, who ran for Congress for the Senate as a Democrat, has been among those who are calling for this. Will President Biden be releasing uh, the sources of income that were in that three, $13 million, particularly there's attention being paid to his uh, son and whether he earned any money from his businesses. Well, again, the president doesn't have uh, dealings with his family members about business, uh, and he has released decades of tax returns, uh, which is more than I can say for his predecessor. The president plans to offer, as you said, a contrast, um, and it was written, quote, to Congressional Republicans' ultra-MAGA plan to raise taxes. Now, the Washington Post has called that claim false, that there is a Republican congressional plan to raise taxes. Why is this statement still being shared? Because Chairman Scott's plan, and we welcome him. We know he, he's asked for people to go to his website. We would encourage people to do the same thing and check out his plan that raises taxes for people making less than $100,000 a year. Mitch McConnell, and, and this, um, this report, it, there aren't any other Republicans signing on to this at this point. So is it fair to say that Republicans as a whole are pushing? He's the chairman right of the committee. If Republicans want to repudiate his plan, they should go do that. But otherwise, that continues to be what they're running on. But back on the Rick Scott question, uh, Senator McConnell did repudiate that, that plan. So uh, how can you say it stands for, for what Republicans? Well, he's the chairman of the committee. I, I wouldn't say every Republican has repudiated. If they don't, if that's not at all the, the plan they're running on and none of them are for it, then they can speak for themselves. And there is growing concern about a persistent supply issue with infant baby formula. Yeah. It's got about 40% shortage right now. Major retailers is having to limit how much people can buy, especially acute in places like Tennessee, Missouri, Iowa. This is partly an FDA issue, but it yeah. could be a Biden administration issue. I'm just wondering if you guys are planning on taking any steps to help remedy that making sure they're stock on the shelves, right? Uh, and, the, and working with the industry right now to optimize their supply lines, product sizes to increase capacity, and prioritizing product lines that are of greatest needs. Because obviously, um, as someone who, my, my child has long been out of formula, fortunately, but it's close enough that I remember when you're trying to go to the store and get the specific kind of formula for your age child or whatever their needs are. So what they're trying to do in the shorthand of it is increase supply by working with a range of manufacturers and what their capacity is to ensure that the kinds of uh, formula that is it was was recalled is where they're able to help ensure it's on the on the shelves. Maybe that's something that's kept in a national stockpile, you know? I don't believe there's a national stockpile of baby formula. Um, you suggested that uh, peacefully protesting outside the homes of, of judges and, and Supreme Court justices is part of uh, freedom of expression and, and part of what we do in the United States. But there's a, there's a law in Virginia that actually prohibits protest outside private residence even when it's done peacefully. Yes, we are a country that promotes democracy, and we certainly allow for peaceful protest uh, in a range of places in the country. None of it should violate the law. No one is suggesting that. Does the president have a clear 
um, belief in what he thinks the restrictions should be on, or if there should be any restrictions on abortion. You've been asked this before, but I just want to get a clear answer. Uh, the president's view is that women should be able to make choices about their own health care. I'm not going to detail it further beyond what he said in the past from here. Restrictions? Again, I'm not going to detail his opinion. He's spoken to this a number of times. Go ahead. The president and you have talked about the MAGA crowd or the ultra MAGA. How does that jive with his desire to be the bipartisan guy? Well, the president's view is you can do both and build on the nearly 80 bills that we signed into law last year that are bipartisan. But he's also not going to stand by uh, and not call out what he sees as uh, ultra MAGA uh, behavior, ultra MAGA policies um, that are out of the mainstream of the country and are not in the interest of the American people. Does the president plan to condemn the leak of the Supreme Court draft opinion or the doxing of the justices now? As you know, there's also some allies who are protesting outside justices' homes, including Brett Kavanaugh, who, if there's any kind of a compromise, conservative ruling that preserves some of Roe, he could be part of that with Roberts. So my question is, um, is it appropriate to protest outside people's homes, and is it productive or not productive? Look, I would say in terms of the productive question, that's not for me to speak to. Obviously, these justices make dis decisions as an independent body. Uh, how they are influenced or if they are influenced is not for me to make a determination of. Can you wave anybody off for, for tactical reasons? Uh, we're not here to give tactical advice to protesters. What we and what's his level of concern? There's a recession uh, in the next 12 months. So that household balance sheets are strong and businesses are investing in the United States. So we look at that base data, th that data, as we look at the economy. And of course, we continue to monitor as data comes in and as we see fluctuations. So what's his level of concern about a recession? Again, we, we monitor it. We are continuing to. We're not predicting that at this point in time. We have not seen violence uh, or vandalism against Supreme Court justices. We have seen it at Catholic churches. That's unacceptable. The president does not support that. We have seen it at some conservative organizations that we don't support that. And we certainly call for, we know the passion, we understand the passion, we understand the concern. But what the president's position is, is that that should be peaceful, the protest. But continue. Go. Does the president plan to condemn the leak of the Supreme Court draft opinion or the doxing of the justices now that we've seen violence unfold? Well, I would say that we have been clear, and the president's position has long been, that we should not see protest that takes the form of violence, that takes the form of vandalism, um, and that threatens anyone. Um, that has long been his position for his entire uh, career and continues to be his position. It appears to be to have this vote on Wednesday, which will fail, and then make this a midterm issue? Well, we support um, uh, Leader Schumer's uh, decision to uh, get people on the record on this, uh, on, on a codifying row. And that's something the president would be happy to sign into law. At the same time, we certainly recognize that the votes, we don't have the votes. You can tell me, you cover the hill closely, you can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, we understand that, but we think it's important and an important issue to get people on the record on. Um, without getting into politics from here, again, I don't make the rules, I just try to follow them. In the president's statement last week, he noted that in order to take legislative action, we would need more uh, Democratic uh, senators. But China last week cut tariffs on coal from Russia coming in to zero. Um, the Chinese have also uh, had a record imports uh, last month from China, from Russia to China. 57% was the increase. At what point is China breaking the sanctions? Uh, and then when is the president going to stand up and say, hey, and call out China? to stop this behavior in supporting Russia? We clearly will watch closely. And uh, if, if that were to happen, I don't think we have seen to date a breaking of the sanctions at this point in time. I expect we'll have more. I have, even though I have dwindling days left here, I'm still not going to get ahead of the president because, you know, I want to enjoy those last few days. Just to follow up on all that, Mary asked what I would for the most part. Um, but <laughs> Look at that collegiality at play.